Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield back in Las Vegas talking to one of my favourite acts and one of the most polished performers here in Sin City. Dirk Arthur's Wild Magic is here at its new home, Westgate Theatre. I'm delighted to say he joins us now. How are you doing? Fantastic. Thanks for uh, coming out all this way to, to see our magic. Do you know, it's thrilling when you see somebody who's really great at what they do. And there's quite a few things I want to say about your show. But firstly, thank you for not being self-indulgent, because it seems to me in this town, people waste half the show telling us how amazing they are. You just come on and it's all killer, no filler, isn't it? I presume that's deliberate. Y- yes. Well, thank you. Well, I mean, I you know... I think when someone wants to see a magic show, they, they've come to see great magic. And in our case, of course, we feature the big cats. So I always try to give the audience what they want. And I really don't need to, you know, give myself an ego boost, you know, by, uh, you know, telling everyone how great I am. Plus, I think there's an old showbiz saying that instead of, you know, telling them how great you are, just show what you can do. And if they like it, you know, that's what you want. You've got a huge showroom here at Westgate, and it's beautifully produced, this show. The best daytime magic show by a mile. The lighting, the sound, the visuals, the slinkiness of the show. Congratulations, because that doesn't come cheap or easy, does it? It, it, Thank you kindly. I appreciate that. And this is actually a co-production between myself and uh, Roberts Hawaii, which is a fantastic group, which I partnered with. And they are the ones that deserve all the credit for all the uh, additions of the uh, production, the scenery, uh, the dancers. And uh, we've combined that, of course, with my uh, big cats and the magic and uh, that's how we ended up here at uh, Westgate and again you put a ton of money into this show there are four dancers there's specials in between obviously there's a huge crew because what's going on backstage I guess is more complicated than what's going on in front of the curtain the sound guys the lighting it costs a lot of money to keep these shows on and I guess for you it's getting people here to Westgate to see it because once they come the hard work's done Exactly. And it is expensive. Uh, even, you know, the illusions themselves are super expensive, of course, because we have a lot of original uh, material. And uh, we haven't done this in a while, but back in the day when the economy was like really cranking, I would just tell the uh, designers and the builders, I'd be like, I don't care what it costs. You know, I want this to happen. I want, you know, a car to disappear in midair. <laughs> and uh, they'd be like, do you want us to bid it? And I was like, just, you know, build it. You know, of course, now we've got to be a little more careful. And, uh, you know, after the economy, we had our slowdown with the economy. Uh, but I was lucky and fortunate enough and maybe crazy enough to devise a lot of really cool, you know, original illusions. And uh, it's kind of paying off now. It's interesting. I mean, there are so many 4 p.m. magic shows in this town and there are so many magicians. It's certainly cool and it's back, isn't it? It is. It is. It's it's a lot of fun. Magic's, you know, the popularity is just remaining. And I think we do have something unique because we do have uh, all the big cats. I'm, I'm one of the last shows in the world, I think, to feature uh, big live animals. Let's get this out the way, because when I see them, I see nothing but glory. They are sensational. They're magnetic to watch. It is utterly compelling. There are some people who say they shouldn't be in the show. I love a little video you do where you talk about how you love them. And it is clear on that stage that they are your friends and that they are partners with you in this they're not just some stooge for the show just help us with that for the people who say why should i come and see animals in a show well i mean one of the really cool things that we're able to do by featuring you know rare animals is increase awareness for the importance of preserving really all wildlife and uh, the animals in the show give the, get the absolute you know best phenomenal care they're really my family and we're you know 1000 percent devoted to animals and i got into working with animals of course because i love animals not because i want to force them to do anything and and we never force the animals to be in the show uh we have extra cats for each part of the show and uh, really we want it to be fun for the cats and uh, if an animal's not suited to being in show business then you know then we don't force it but uh, I think there's something just unbelievable about seeing a live animal live you know a tiger or a snow leopard up close that I think does so much more to increase the public's awareness about preserving wildlife so much more than a video or a photograph and plus we also breed the cats and ultimately many of these animals could become extinct so uh, I think we do a lot of good you know there are always those that you know some people don't think you should have your you know an indoor cat you know there's always people some people don't think you should eat meat you know uh but i would say 99.99 percent of everyone that uh, sees the show loves it and of course the animals are awesome you know the tigers and the leopards i mean they'll come up and you know give me a big kiss sometimes and uh, <laughs> uh it's super fun you know we just we have a lot of fun with the show you told me last time i think we last spoke in 2009 that you did have some divas in the show at that point and that they refuse to go on and when they don't they just don't it is as simple as that if they're not in the mood they don't take part in the show is that still the case 
yeah, exactly. I mean, most of the time, the animals, they, they love to actually, you know, appear in the show. But yeah, there are from time to time. I, a long time ago, we had a tiger that um, I think he just, for some reason, he just got tired of, of being in the show. And I remember one day before the show, he pretty much, you know, he growled at me and he pretty much gave me this look like, you know, if you make me do this show, I'm going to kill you. And I was like, okay. I got the message, you know, no problem. And, and I presume you can, and you must be able to read them because, I mean, these are your friends. You've seen them every day. And this is a very small part of your day together, this 90 minutes during the show. Yes, I mean, that is true. I often think about it, you know, even on my supposed day off, you know, which was yesterday, I spent that, you know, the, almost the entire day in the habitat uh, with the animals. But that's something that we have to do. We have to read the cats, make sure, you know, they're in the correct frame of mind. And, of course, safety is super important because I would never want anything you know, negative or anything to cast a negative light uh, on what we do. Uh, and, you know, obviously you don't want anyone to get hurt and you don't want an animal to get hurt. So, so we're always concerned about safety, uh, but mostly we just have a lot of fun. Tell me about your day. You wake up in the morning and the cats are at home with you, are they? Or do you have to go to them? Actually, we have a, a beautiful habitat right on my property. And uh, yes, the day starts, you know, with, you know, checking on the cats, making sure everyone's comfortable and happy and clean. They have their fresh water. They have their toys. You know, they're playing together. Uh, everything is good. Uh, then we uh, commence to, you know, load up the cats uh, to their special, we have a special air conditioned trailer that we transport them to. And they basically just come to the theater just right before the show. And then we do the show and then they go back home uh, to the habitat what an extraordinary life you lead and it must cost a lot of money because these eat a lot don't they and i know you're feeding them well yes they eat much better than i do <laughs> <laughs> yeah they don't have to go to uh you know mcdonald's <laughs> yeah sometimes i i eye the uh the steaks and the filet mignon i'm like man that looks pretty good <laughs> yeah. they have an incredible life and um, back to the show then so in it you have some extraordinary illusions this is not close-up magic these are big impressive wow moment tricks how do you put together a show like this and how long does it take is it a lifetime's work it, it is a lifetime's work although uh this this version of the show we put together relatively quickly just due to uh circumstances but luckily uh the roberts hawaii team uh, we're very familiar with putting together magic shows. They have a successful show in Hawaii, uh, another successful show there. And, uh, of course, I had all my signature illusions. But the uh, the big spectacular tricks, those are the ones I think that really get people excited. I mean, the cats will bring them into the door. But, the, uh, you know, my appearing helicopter, I'm doing my levitating car again, which we took out of the show for a while. So I'm super happy to be doing that. That one's really fun. It's fun just to, you know, gesture and have a car, you know, float. So, uh, yeah, we have a lot of fun with the big tricks. This is what Vegas is all about, really. A big budget, high production, a lot of people involved shows that are unique. There aren't many of those left in this town, are there? Well, no. I mean, other than the you know Cirque du Soleil type shows, but so far as the magic shows that put all this into it that are spectacular, that aren't just you know one guy doing some close-up tricks or or comedy. There's a lot of shows uh, I think now that are going for the smaller type of effects, and it, they can be entertaining. But I think it's the economy. I think again the amount of money and time and energy. But to me, it's super fun just to be able to create something and then develop it and then put it on stage. You know, that's uh, that's what really gets me. I guess thing. thrilling is the world. Yes, yeah. I mean, it never stops to be to be thrilling and just to be able to sit at home and think of something, you know, amazing or something impossible that's never been done and then engineer it and create it and then present it to the audience and then, you know, your fingers crossed, you know, that they like it and uh, usually they do. Ducks, chickens, tigers, leopards. What else do we have in the show? Uh, yes, we have all the animals. We have a, a very feisty bobcat that is actually uh, the smallest cat in the show. She's probably about 15 pounds and probably the hardest cat to train. Bobcats are, you know, are pretty wild. They're usually not used in shows. You know, my friends, you know, wonder why I have a bobcat. But I love, you know, all the cats. But she, for her, what's fun is to... Um, uh, it's kind of to act wild. She likes to snarl and act wild, but it's pretty much just a play act for her, And uh, but the people love it, and, and I like her personality. She has a lot of charisma. I guess the greatest moment in this show was the uh, snow tiger where you gave her a kiss at the end, and it was just a beautiful moment. She came to you. You didn't go to her. Um, that's what the audience loves, isn't it? Because that's pure trust. Exactly. And that's something that, uh, you know, that's probably the funnest thing for me is to sort of show the audience uh, the trust and the mutual respect between myself and the animals. 
And they are remarkable. When you look at their size compared to you, it is still astonishing. And we're not used to seeing these cats. I mean, across the street where Siegfried and Roy, they still have the habitat there where you can actually go and see these animals. But for most people in this audience, they may never even have seen a big cat before. That's right. And, uh, you know, some of the popularity of zoos and uh, other animal shows have declined. So it is amazing. And we do the one, uh, what we call a behavior, where one of the cats leaps up, puts her paws on my shoulders and stands up to her full height. And uh, people just go crazy to see that because you're seeing how big you know that tiger really is and i think that underscores the point that if they didn't want to be there they wouldn't be because although you've got them on a chain they would just walk off i mean they are much bigger than you yes i mean the animals they pretty much do what they want i mean we gently guide them and we teach them and we'll say hey you know this is fun and and you know we'll praise you and we'll hug you and you know, we love you and you can have a nice piece of steak and most of the time the animals are like yeah that's fine you know i'll just i'll just go over here you know and it is about reward i notice in every illusion at the end the payoff is they get fed which is of course what every animal wants exactly exactly yeah they're pretty spoiled one of the first times uh i started working with my uh, snow leopard and i gave him a big chunk of filet mignon i'll never forget his look his expression <laughs> And he just like, he looked at me like, you are one cool dude. <laughs> like, I have never eaten something like that in my life. And ever since then, we've been best friends. Congratulations on being you. This is a one-off. It's the only place you can see it. There's certainly nothing like this in England anymore. Nothing like this in Las Vegas or the US, as far as I'm aware right now. Uh, Dirk Arthur's Wild Magic is on here at the Westgate, the uh, the old Hilton, for people who don't know. Um, it's this new renovated hotel, and you can come here and see the show at 4 o'clock. It is the best daytime magic show by a mile. Congratulations. Thank you so much, and uh, great to see you again. Don't be a stranger. It's been five years, I think. My absolute pleasure. Good to talk to you. Thank you. Thank you, Alex.